Monday Scrum. Yes, welcome to the Monday Scrum. We've got no Benji Marshall, no Emma Lawrence today. They've all had big magic round weekends, <laughs> but we've still got the greatest journalist in the NRL, Brent Reid. Oh, Reedy, how are you, mate? Charlie, good man, stepping into the hot seat. I, I have, mate. Control. Uh, this segment and this bloke beside me. I know. Welcome in, Aaron Woods. Uh, Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for having me. Stop it. Just big shoes to fill with uh, Benji Marshall and Emma Lawrence not here at the moment. Yeah, I know. Lots of pressure on us, Woodsy. Uh, we'll be right. We'll be right. It's been we'll a good be right. magic round, so there's a fair bit to talk about. What do you boys do then, the magic round? Do you stay there the night after, on Saturday? Or you come back on, on on Saturday night? How does it work? Yeah, look, Charlie, it would have been a better Saturday night if we had a one. Um, so obviously we got beaten Golden Point. We were the second game and... Um, it was a bit of a sorry shit after the game. We went straight back and tried to catch the second half of the Storm and Penrith game. And we had a, you know, we were allowed to have a couple of beers back at the hotel, but no one went out. We just sort of stayed low. And yeah, it wasn't the best feeling. Can't after go to the game. Revs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or... Revs, Prohibition, whatever it is up yeah, there. Yeah. And um, yeah, we had an early flight the next morning and, you know, be pretty sorrow and straight back to the family. Mate. Reedy was in good form, I think. Oh, I'm looking forward to hitting my pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to some sleep. He's had a massive weekend, have we, Reedy? Well, uh, it's amazing. I was saying to um, I was talking to Buzz Rothfield this morning. I said we should send every journal we've got up there for Magic Round because you just bump into people it's... you haven't seen in a long time, and you know you go to the bar in the hotel and you stay there. You end up staying there till one, two in the morning, just catching up with people and catching up with agents and CEOs. And it's so good for your career, I reckon. Oh, it's awesome for players. Like, I've been at four clubs and it was like a players reunion for me <laughs> going up there. Because we, we stayed at the Pullman, which is connected to the McCure. And we had um, the Roosters, the Sharks, the Tigers, Newcastle, over, obviously over three or four days. What about so. Blake hate though, would you? You just sort of, there's a corridor and it's like at the reception, there's like a big oval and you could go one way or the other. So oh, right. if you see someone you don't want to talk to, just go the other way. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Loved it. I had a great weekend. You, you probably stayed at the Sofitel, but. Sofitel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who we are we at? Melbourne? Stop it. South? All the big uh, dogs. Tigers? All the big dogs. And Canterbury. That's where it was all happening with Canterbury. But we'll it is all that. happening. And that's where we're going to start after only winning five games during his time at the Bulldogs. Trent Barrett has been sacked, stood down. We don't quite know yet, but we'll do this. Yeah, well, Charlie, that's the big news of the day, isn't it? The fallout from uh, the Bulldogs' loss at the weekend. Um, you know, the Dogs have put out a statement now saying that Trent Barrett resigned or quit last night on Sunday night. Um, mm. it, you know, I think the writing was on the wall for Baz regardless. I mean, those stories emerged uh, sort of late as Sunday. We break that news on the on the the during the game that there were some, some meetings to be had on Monday about his future, uh, and, the uh, you know, the writing was on the wall for him. So, um, you know, he's obviously got to pay it out of the club. Um, it's sad for Trent because he's, you know, we know Trent is a good fellow, cracking bloke. Um, but, you know, you just, you've got to win football games. That's ultimately what it comes down to. And if you don't win, you lose your job. And for them to sack him now, would they have someone up their sleeve straight away? Or Well, I don't think. It seems to have happened really quickly. Well, even though it feels like it's been brewing. Well, it's only around 10. Too, yeah, really. The end of it sort of felt like it came really suddenly. Yeah. You know, it sort of escalated over the weekend after that game on Friday night. And they were pretty poor. Uh, on Friday night, Friday night, and um, it just sort of seemed to happen really quickly. So I don't think they do. You know, they've got Dave Ferner there, who's been a head coach before, and yep. you know, pretty respected guy, and, and uh, been around a lot of clubs, obviously over the years. You also got Gus there to help them out as well. You got Gus there to help out, and I'm not sure if they'll actively go and pursue an interim coach outside the club straight away because you look at it, there's probably really only Flano maybe. Yeah. Paul Green. Josh Henney. Josh. But Josh has obviously got a job at Cronulla, so yeah, you'd have true. to get him out of Cronulla, wouldn't you? So I'm saying guys who actually don't have gigs at the moment. Yeah, Even Flanner's got a gig. I mean, he's at he's he's your for joint. Us recruitment, so. so, you know, it's not, I don't, I don't know how easy it will be to get a coach at this point. So they may have to just look within. And as you said, Gus is there. Gus ran training anyway last week, didn't he? Or the week before? <laughs> yeah. And they won. And Brad Fittler's name's been tossed up. Is that, that is that is there any truth to that, or is that just a bit of a rumor? Well, he is close to Gus, obviously. Um, and yeah, Freddie's said uh, in recent years that he would would like to be an NRL coach again. I mean, he obviously had that stint at the Roosters, re- really successful early on. Things sort of went a bit pear shaped after that. But you know, he's shown with New South Wales, Freddie, that he's he's a smart coach. He thinks a bit laterally, and as I said, he's got that great relationship with Gus. So. Um, but like, like, would he be willing to give up his nine and, and New South Wales deals well, to... I suppose that's the question, eh? Hey? I mean, he's locked in with New South Wales too, so he would have to get out of that deal. I'm sure, you know, if they wanted, if he wanted the job, I, I don't think New South Wales would stand in his way. 
Um, but they're a long way down the track. I mean, Origin's in two, I think they picked the team in two weeks, don't three, they? Three weeks, I think three? it is, yeah. So, I mean, a bit, a bit hard for him to pull himself out of Origin now. And is Cameron Serrato a guy that they'd have their eye on as well for next would, season? I think they would love Cameron Sorrell, though. But whether Cameron Sorrell would love them back, that's the issue. Um, you know, we saw with Fitzy, he waited till the good job came along. Yeah. Um, and I think Cameron's cut from a similar cloth. I'm not sure whether he'd jump at that job. So do, do you think the young coaches would go there straight away? Or is it a senior coach that would probably have to pick them up and, and get them out of the, the fight they're in at the moment? Yeah. Well, the most the, the, aside from Flano and Greeny, there's obviously Cam Seraldo, Christian Wolfe, who's yeah, in yeah. England, with, with St. Helens. And again, I don't think Christian would be able to come straight away because he's locked in with St. Helens. Yep. And I don't think he'd walk out in that deal. So I think whoever you get, they're not going to. They're going to have to walk in straight away. They'll come in at the end of the season. You add Reed Marnie, Viliami Kikau. I'm sure Gus hasn't finished massaging that roster. Um, you're pro- you're actually walking. Pro- I reckon you're walking into a pretty good situation. I about you. What do you think, Woods? Yeah, I, think I, it's a- I reckon that's probably what they lack this year is a really, really decent nine. And I think Gus probably would have tried to do anything he could to get Reed Marnie this year. Mm. But obviously, with Hodgson going down at Canberra, you know he was probably the one that was going to take him take a money spot at Para. That sort of fell through. So. And like I said, getting Viliami kick out next year, yeah. their back row is going to be really good. It's just that spine. And, you know, you look yeah. at the real good sides, Melbourne Penrith, they've got a real consistent spine and they dominate every week. Well, so. they've got to find a fullback because yeah, by the think, sounds that Matt Dufty's going to Warrington. That's just yeah, about, that's, if it's not a done deal, it's... But then there's no, who's the other fullbacks there. in the market? That's Well, they've got Corey Allen, but again, he's, he hasn't really he's had a shot there. Every week. There was some talk Josh had a car, we're going to start at fullback this week, but now Trent's gone. I don't know whether that yeah. ch- changes the their... The, 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 idea there, but you're right. There's not many fullbacks. Scott oh. Drinkwater, is he off contract next year he's or the year after? He's off contract in 12 months' time. Okay, but yeah. but I, I, he's a perfect perfect one for them, Charlie. I, they need points. Mm. He's a player like, he's probably more known for his tacking prowess, and you know sometimes you probably want to, you know, you're looking up there when you hear Toddy talk after the game, they want that controlling half, whereas they've got Chad Townsend now, whereas it gives the option of Drinkwater to, to score points and attack, because he's got the, the calm half now. Do you think, reckon they'd let? But he's sort of a he, he's sort of become their fullback now. The Hammers, know, but yeah, but Hammers he was injured and he, he was. was playing some really good footy. And if it releases the cap up there, don't forget they've got um, Leilua going there next yeah. year. So and they want to be able to keep Nenai, uh, Nenai and is it um, um, Luki. He, Luki. Yeah, Luki. He's a gun too. So yeah. I think they've done Luki a bit longer. But Nano, you're Nano's right. only one Nano's year one deal. Year deal so. If you're watching the way he's playing, oh, yeah, his price going. tag's going up. Queenslander. Up. Oh. Queenslander, Woodsy. Yes. Yeah, it's it. a brutal industry, though. Barrett, I'm pretty sure he was at a pub. I was reading, I think Hoops did an article yeah. Fox Sports that Barrett was sitting in a pub at a wake. And That's then the what news I'm saying. I came think it up happened on, quick, though, yeah. Charlie. I don't think. I, I think it's happened really fast. I think the plan was for. Well, but, but Gus said two weeks ago that oh, no. long term, Barrett's going to be the man that gets. Can never yeah, but there. they can sell it. They can see they've, they've worked it well, right? How, you know they what can I've, sell it. The Trent resigned. I've also Gus read. Gus didn't push him. Yeah, but I've also read. What's the members stuff there like? So how does that work? Their that... directors get voted in every two years. Yep. So they have elections every two years, and those those directors were getting rung up by fans or members and just get abused, calling for Trent's head basically. So it's so, basically not just Gus's decision. It's no, the board would have had, the board obviously has a say in it yeah. because they've got to approve a payout of it. Of, of well, he cops a lot of flat Gus too, and he does. Yeah, yeah. Bring someone himself though, occasionally Gus. Yeah, well, moving to the I'm football talking. then, boys. <laughs> it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Footy uh, goes on, Charlie. Footy goes on. Quick in this it's game. The game that just keeps delivering. <laughs> the Roosters got a massive win against Parramatta, thirty-one twenty-four. Do you watch the game, Woodsy? Yeah, love it, mate. I watch it. They were they were outstanding. You know, I thought from the first kick off of the game when Hargraves took it up and. He had two hit-ups that set. You know, when you know the the big boys in the Roosters pack, because they love to play that real powerful style of game. Um, and you know, one that really surprised me was Joseph Suwali. Oh. He doesn't shy away from the real tough stuff. He loves the physical it's, stuff, doesn't he? And as as he goes into contact, like he, he, he sort of steps and goes harder. Yeah. And they couldn't stop him. I thought he was getting him on the front foot and, and giving him a good platform for the forwards to play Do off. Do you know him, Woodsy? Because you've got a mutual connection there. No, nah, I don't know him. I, okay. Obviously, he's in the same management company that I'm at. Yeah. But no, nah, I've just heard good raps from him for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they they spoke to us a couple of years ago when he was at Souths. And, yep. and I think Kings, he went to Kings yeah, School. Kings, yeah. yeah, yeah. And well, he went to the Kings with the other kid from Parramatta, the centre too. Yeah, Mate, they've got Penacity. a good little crop there. So What about his try when he flew up like Israel Folau? But he did it easy. so good. It, I, I was, uh, I can't remember the winger for Parramatta. Um, pa- per, uh, per, wait, uh, Hayes Perrin. Yeah. 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 Poor bloke got a knee in the back of the head. <laughs> it, it <laughs> specky. Was, mate, it was an absolute specky. And he got down easy. And, yeah. oh, 
Yeah, like, it was so effortless the way he did it. So controlled. Like I don't understand why they haven't been doing it more often. Well, because they've got Tupac on the yeah. other yeah. week, so they can go wherever they want. You he's so I love, edge. Uh, Yeah, he's 18, that kid. It's remarkable what he's doing. He's such a... We spoke to him after the game. He's, he, you know, he's pretty modest. But you know what? I like how like the Roosters have just, haven't just thrown him in there and say, do your best. They've mm. looked after him. Last year, they could have just stuck with him, let him get, you know, yeah. show him what NRL was like every week. But Robinson sort of just give him a couple of games, come back, give him a couple of games. And he looks like he's got so much out of it. Yeah. And he's just reading the game so well. And, you know, for a young kid to do those play one, play two carries the way he does, incredible. Yeah. Well, on the other side, boys, Parramatta, they started quite slowly. And this is uh, what Brad Arthur had to say in the press conference. Yeah, was, our start was poor. I think the games that we've lost this year, we've been beaten to the punch at the start of the game. And we're, we're waiting to see what the opposition's going to do. We, we need to go after the game at the start. And the games that we start well makes a difference to us. Um, you know, I was happy that we, we had that fight in us in the second half and we didn't go away from the contest. But against good, good teams, you give them that much of a, a start. We, in terms of the scoreboard, it's very hard to peg back. So they've had kind of a strange year so far this year. They win one. They have a massive win last week against Penrith. I think the week before that, they had a poor game against the Cowboys, maybe. Yep. Where, how do you see them so far this season, Woodsy? I think when they've had to lift, they've, they've lifted. You know, like we said, they, they probably should have won that game against Cowboys. It was their home game, uh, taking up to Darwin there. But they obviously got blown off the park because they probably didn't respect Cowboys enough. But then next week, they copped a fair bit of the media but they and they got up for it against Penrith. But then, yeah, it's like... We were probably, they're probably heavy favourites to win that game against Roosters because that Roosters haven't been playing probably the, what we expected from the Roosters this year. And yeah, I, I totally agree. That. They just got blown off the park. But in saying that, they still had their opportunities. Like Dylan Brown makes that break in the like last two three minutes of the game. If he looks on the other side, he, he finds um, Gutho, you know, on support. They score. It makes it. I think it was thirty one thirty at that time. So. They're just letting teams get out too much of a lead, and it's just so hard to, to draw them back. Your man Mitchie Moses had a good game, though. Yeah, he's playing well. Um, I think, you know, Mitchell's on when he runs, and, you know, yeah. he set up that first try. I think to see the best out of Mitch, he needs to run more. Um, his kicking game's been phenomenal, and, you know, that's probably what's kept Parramatta in the game with how well he kicks. Are you but telling him that when you ring him five and six times a week? Or every what? time. I said, I don't know why he doesn't run as much as possible, <laughs> because, mate, honestly, as a big man, when, the, when, when he runs, and he's a very smart football brain, too, if he sees. What he likes to do is obviously get a wide four, you know, so the, the play of the ball and then from the from the wing, he likes to get a big man caught on the short side and he takes him on every time of the, every day he gets the opportunity. So when he does that, you know, he's on. Mm. Yeah. They, they, they were disapp- disappointing. Oh, look, the wrists were really good, I thought. You know, Sammy Walker was outstanding as well. Kiri, I thought Kiri, one Kiri of Kiri's better great. games. Uh, Angus Crichton had a good game. Right. Found yeah, a bit he, of form. He looked really good, Crichton. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the Roosters were really good. But, uh, you know, I would like to have seen Parramatta back up after last week. It's disappointing they didn't because, you know, if you want to be in, in, in regarding that category with Melbourne and Penrith, yeah. you've got to back up against the good teams and they weren't able to do it. So I think there's a question mark still there. And f- where they are on the ladder too, it was a massive game really. Yeah. Like they could have went and jumped into the four comfortably, especially yeah. with Cronulla losing. So... <laughs> Just yeah. back on then the Roosters one. So you talk about Angus Crichton. What's actually happened with his contract there? Well, that's a good question, Charlie. I, I thought it was done. I think we all thought it was done because they had sort of an agreement in place for a two-year extension, but it looks as though that, that deal's become a bit um, bogged down and and may not necessarily happen now. So I think we've got to just wait and see how it plays out. But my understanding was they had a two-year agreement basically in place. So did he agree on it or...? Well, I, I thought they'd agreed on it. I think a lot of us thought they'd agreed on it. But obviously there were some things they hadn't quite agreed on. And because of that, the deal actually hasn't been rubber stamped. So if that's the case, I mean, he's, you know, on the market. I'm sure rugby will take a look at Angus Crichton if he can't do a deal with the Roosters because, you know, it's a World Cup next year and he's a rugby guy. So. We don't want to lose a player like that. He's an origin no. player. Yeah. No, you don't. You don't. I mean, other, I mean sure, and other and NRL clubs will look at him as well. I mean, he's a good footballer. Well, you look at the Tigers. They're looking for a back row. Yeah. Something. Something. Maybe. Read his mail. <laughs> Could be. Next week. Well, speaking of segments, Benji's not here, but Woodsy, you're going to have a crack at this, aren't you? Yeah. Benji Marshall. Benji Marshall. Oh, Benji Marshall. Marshall's Law. Yeah, so these are one of the big shoes I have to fill today. Marshall's Law. And today, I'm just going to go with a bloke, Adam Reynolds. You know, I think he's been the buy of the year so far. Just just out pips, I think, Chad Townsend. And he's been really good for the Cowboys. Obviously, we're there, we're there at the moment. But Adam Reynolds, if you just – you go on to Brisbane. Brisbane's one of the biggest clubs in the NRL. They demand success straight away. And what he's done since he's been up there, the, the game management, it just looks like – 
he's gave everyone around him confidence. You know, you, they had no Payne Hass, no Capewell two weeks ago going into to the game against, I think it was, no, it wasn't Souths. Sharks, yeah, it was, it was, was it? No, it was Souths, I think it was Souths. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no one gave them a hope to, to win that game. And he just controlled that game, a couple of chips and chases he's been pulling off. And it's like the more pressure that's been on him, the, the more he's been loving the, his time up there. Can and, I just pick up on something? You said no one gave him a hope. I already oh, did. I tipped them. <laughs> Please. Tipped you, did them. you tip them with? I've tipped them every week this year. Oh, I always tip year. them on Broncos oh, fans. Good on you, mate. Yeah. Oh, no, I like one, that you stick solid. Year, You've got to stick solid. That was two years ago. <laughs> but he's just... Is he surprised with how good he's gone up there? Would he or what? Obviously, I thought he would have been a loss to South, but I didn't think it would be this big of a loss to South Sydney and to see how they've been going without him. And I think he just brings so much confidence to the players around him. Um, he's getting the best out of other players. Like, just see him give... Um, early board of Cobo, you know, um, just to see the the strike powers that they've got there. Yeah. It, it's, it's unbelievable the how they're well. playing. As Herbie good as Farmworth, he mate, they're they're so good and so. I love watching the Broncos at the moment because the footy they play. There's some young guys, but he's just getting the best out of everyone around him. Even Billy Walters is a hooker. Everyone said a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. what's he playing there? They've won every game since he's been there. Did the Broncos ever have a go at you, would you? Or ever have a... <laughs> yeah, they, they are, mate. It? I've had it every club. If you, if you <laughs> listen to what you guys write. <laughs> but um, look, mate, they're a really good club. And I think they're a club on the rise. And, um, you know, with the way they're playing, I don't see why they, they won't be able to give the top sides a, you know, a shake of the title. Mm. The confidence that they're breathing up there. You know, Katoni Staggs, if he makes origin, goes to the next level. It's crazy how they're going. Yeah. No, they've been very good. Very good. Very good. You don't very want to pump good. them up, obviously, because you go no, for them. You much. want to be nice not and quiet. But under the radar. Under the radar. Under the radar, radar so. But it's just for them, like we spoke about Parra, they've got to be consistent. Yeah. And, you know, they've won, I think, three or four in a row now. So Four in a row, Four in a row, Four in a row, yeah. In a row, yeah. It's yeah, funny, like, you know, we talk about coaches before. Kevy was under the pump. He was. Prior to that. And since then, it's just been unreal. Good, really happy for him. Yeah. Well, speaking of teams in form, the Cowboys, they've now got the second best defense in the competition. They're sitting in, uh, I think, fourth spot at the moment, or third spot, actually, at the moment. Top four. What's their ceiling, boys? What do you think? I was going to say, well, I, look, I thought they were a chance at top eight before the season started. I didn't have them in my top eight, but I thought they were a chance. But I think they're, they're a big top four chance now. Uh, I keep sort of, I think a lot of people are sort of waiting for them to fall a bit. But you know what? The next two weeks are huge. I think they got Penrith, Melbourne, don't they? The then next sharks, two weeks. Then sharks, Penrith, Melbourne, then, Sharp, blimey. Yeah. So, I mean, if they come out of those three weeks, with just so they get two wins, you've got to st- You've got to say they're, they're top four chances, big top four chances if they win two of those three. The, the footy they've been playing too, like you can tell it's got Todd Payton's hands written man, all over your it. Man, yeah. you, all you blokes are into him at the start of the oh, year. I wasn't into him. Tamalalo and all that. Was... Now, look, he's getting the best out of him. Jace, <laughs> Jace played only about 40, 30 minutes yesterday. No one's writing anything about that. Did, it, it, did Woodsy have a coach who he didn't coach you in the No, last I had team. Toddy assistant. I yeah. played with him at the Tigers. So yeah. my first year was his last year. Wow. Um, it's funny, like he's one of the smartest blokes you play with. And he's a front row. He's got the silkiest hands, but he's really honest. And yeah. that's probably what they needed up at the Cowboys. And, you know, I've spoken to him a few times just out of, you know, as a mateship. And he said he's always been, always had the players support up there. And, you know, I think he probably regrets what he said about Tamalalo last year, mm. but he's getting the best out of him this year. And, and he always said to me, I remember he said he's got two young back rowers that are going to be superstars that he's really excited to coach. And um, he copped a lot of flack for the Chad Townsend signing, but he's been up. I might have given you a flag about yeah, that. Yeah, you might have. Great signing, though. He's going well. He's got yeah. all the players playing to the best they can. And, you know, they're asking a lot of questions with the ball. And and like Charlie said, I think second or third best defensive team in the competition. And that's where you win games. So he's getting the best out of the players he's got up there. He has a good rela- He seems to have a good relationship with the young blokes. Like yeah, he obviously had a great relationship with Mitch and Brooksy at he won the, the He won the Tigers 20s competition. Yeah. Yes. And he's doing great with Lukey and Nanai um, and Tommy yeah. Deer. What they've done with Tom, Tom Tommy Deer is pretty remarkable. Well, he went up there from Brisbane and... I don't think he won a game in his in his NRL career, yeah. and even when he went up there for the first couple of games, he hadn't won a game. But he's just turned him around. It looks like he's just got all the confidence in the world out of him, and he's such a strong ball carrier. And it's like he he play, he coaches to the strength of the players he's got up there. So um, he's done an exceptional job to see where they are. And mate, Hammer so happy with Fido. Yeah. He's only just coming back from injury, and he's trying to find positions for him. So. It just shows you how good the, as a squad they're playing. I was going to say, you know you're going well when the hammer can't crack the starting mm. team. I mean, that tells you how good they're going. And then they can bring Tamalalo off and put drink water at centre or 5'8". And... It was interesting what he was doing with Hammer. He brought him on at fullback for a bit. Like I think Scott Drinkwater had like 10 minutes off yeah. at the, near the start of the second half. And then they took Peter Hiku, Peter Hiku off yep. for a bit as well. Are they just trying to find Hammer's position there? Or... Uh, yeah, 100%, Charlie. I reckon they're just sort of 
just testing out to see what, what gets the best feel for the side. And it seems you're lucky to be able to do that in the games. Mm. You know, obviously they've got a few wins under the belt. They had that game in control. So, um, yeah, he's just sort of testing out what's, what fits best for the side and, and where everyone's going to fit in that best seven in they got. You just want to get Hammer's hands on the ball, I reckon, oh. because things can happen. He's so quick. He's an exciting player to watch as well, Reedy. You know, he's yeah. one of those guys you go, you pay your money to watch him play. And he, the more times he's got the ball in hand, the, mm. I think the better it's going to be for the Cowboys. I will say this about the Tigers, though. Right. They had a lot of players out. They've got a yeah. lot of injuries at the moment. Yeah, you know, they had I think there was a there was a list put on social media a little while ago and it had all their injuries. And then in that game they lost um the hooker. Simpkin, yeah. Simpkin he got, actually, knocked, uh, he got taken he, uh, the ambulance came and got him the bad paramedics, one. He yeah. Hit straight away. They lost Luke Brooks. Luke Brooks Luke at Brooks. half time. Thomas Mc they lose McKayley. No, McKayley no. didn't play. It was think. the other one they lost. They, they lost, lost the now Marlow for a HIA, which was a oh, poke Marlo, in the eye. Yeah, he came back he came back on though. And then they lost someone else because Yeah. I remember Peachy went to nine and yeah. Junior to come on the hooker. So they're doing it tough. It's <laughs> it's they've had a couple good wins at Tigers, but yeah, just the they they're losing players at the wrong time and you know losing Luke Brooks. Mm. I thought the combination with Brooksy and Hastings has been unreal. So yeah, they're going to hope that Brooks's hamstring is not too bad. I think they got. I think that they, they had about fifty percent of their salary cap is is either injured or under under an injury cloud at the moment. So um, times are tough, and they play the. Canterbury on Friday night, which is they'll be fired up. Well, Canterbury will interim be interim coach. Interim Mate. coach. Hey, yeah. Hey. After, after you lose a coach, you get success. That don't is we? a fallacy, would he? What fallacy. do you mean? Well, no, it's not accurate. It is accurate. It, it is isn't accurate. Isn't Look, I've done my research. All right, what do you Go got for then. us? So a little while ago, um, the record was first game after you sack your coach, the new coach. Won ten of twenty four games. That's pretty good. That's pretty terrible. Almost fifty percent. Yeah, but, you since, but, but, but you, since but, then, but you're coming from a side that hasn't won many. Hold on. Since then, Peter Gentle took over uh, Seeps, didn't he, yep. in Brisbane? Yep. Lost seven or something in a row. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew Webster <laughs> replaced JT. I think he lost two. Owen. Oh, and <laughs> oh, Owen your Webby. mate Owen too. <laughs> One of the greats. Josh Hannay. <laughs> poor old Josh. He replaced Johnny Morris. Lost four in a row. Yeah, but then we had a good... Then you yeah. turned around, yeah. I think we won four or five in a row after that. And he replaced Greeny a long time back and lost Eep as well. Mm. But T- Hannay, no, Hannay turned around. He's he's a coach in waiting, Josh Hannay. Yeah, really good. Uh, yeah. We had him last year, real calm. Um, sort of remind me when, when we got Ivan Cleary at the Tigers. Just, you know, doesn't change his persona, win, lose, or draw. Just wants to get the best out of it and coach to the player's strengths. Mm. You know, he comes in and he knows what, what works best for the team and that's what he tries to do. But the point of that is, Charlie, mm. that... Just because the coach gets replaced, it doesn't mean the team's going to win. But ten and four—if you're winning, if you're winning almost fifty percent. Well, no. After that, it's ten of, not eighteen. Ten of eighteen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's more yeah. than fifty percent. Yeah, it's more than fifty. percent. Sorry, ten and sorry, ten, 10 and, and twenty-eight. 18. Ten, 10 and, and twenty-eight. Sorry. So still though, fifty percent. Their teams 10 are probably twenty-eight, not fifty. Almost. Yeah, twenty-four, thirty percent. Nearly thirty-five. Yeah. Okay, that's good maths. Yeah. And well, they're probably they're, they're probably teams that have lost about five six games they in a row. Are, yeah, probably exactly. Right. Like, well, the dogs are two and eight, so it mm. does improve your chances, but it doesn't guarantee victory. That's what I'm saying. The Fair West enough. Tigers fans shouldn't be overly concerned. Well, as a player that's been through it, you want to just come out and put your best foot forward. Obviously, you're trying. to When did you best. do it with JT and <laughs> you, Josh Hannah? Didn't work. Is that to you prove that lost. the coach should have been sacked, <laughs> or is lost. it to is it to prove not it to there? prove it? Just to say that we're as a group, we're still ripping in. You know, like yeah. You can use it as an excuse, but you don't want to. Anyway. All right, boys. Well, let's finish it off with uh, the Cronulla Sharks. Craig Fitzgibbon, he put Nico Hines at fullback. They didn't get the win. They lost to the Raiders 30-10, to 10, and this is what he had to say in the post game. I just played a right at fullback before, so I thought he was going to do it again. Yeah. That's the decision. I just Braden's done a lot of training with us as well, so obviously very hard for young Braden, who hasn't had a whole heap of NRL halves experience, and we'd, we'd drop him right in it in the space of a week. So there's a bit to get through there, but I, d- I definitely um, we definitely didn't combine in the fashion that we had, but also didn't think that our team put us and uh, the, the players inside and outside them weren't running at the right times and the, there was an execution issue there and I thought, um, yeah, there was something something wrong there with our combinations. What did you make of it, Woodsy? Yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting one. Obviously, the week before, they played with a man down and then playing on the weekend, I think Canberra had three sin bins and in one stage, they had 11 players on the field. So, for me, it looked like they were just the cohesion in the attack, like Fitzy sort of said then, um, for me, I probably wouldn't have moved Hines. I think he's been unreal at, at seven, and his combination with Matty Moreland has been been really good. I think they got a young. Uh, he played in the Aussie sevens, Lachlan Miller. Oh, Lachlan Miller, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I think he's the backup fullback. Um, 
and just I thought they just lost their way a bit. If you're watching the game, I think they played a lot of sideways footy. They weren't like like Fitzy said, blokes weren't running to the right holes. They weren't playing straight. Um, you got two great hole runners in Teague Wilton and, and Britton Akorama that hold up their their defenders every time, and it gives the opportunities to the outside men. Uh, you know, Siva Talakai, who's been reaping the rewards this year. So um, it looked like they just and then they're getting a bit frustrated. Um, you know, Wade Grain come onto the field. He sort of sparked them a little bit, but they just couldn't get that final touch, the final icing of the cake. So, um, yeah, I think as a person looking outside, they'll, they'll probably keep uh, Nico Hines at seven this week, I reckon. Just his leadership and direction that he's been having on the field has been unreal for them. And it's just sort of kept them straight and nice and calm, whereas Trindle's only been playing about five minutes to 10 minutes this year in the five games he's played. It, it's hard for a young kid to come in and, and, and steer the ship like that. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I thought uh, Nico has been going so good in the halves, but I, I, I don't think it would have mattered. Cause I think they were so off. Do you reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon from the week before we're playing with two men down, or well, obviously well, one the juice man, out yeah, of a bit? Yeah, such they, a high emotional yeah. half of the game. It was one of the best wins in in Cronulla's history. To back that up, it's yeah. always a hard thing to do. Yeah, they made they made a lot of mistakes and. They just didn't look the same. So it probably did take a toll on them, Woodsy, to be fair. I mean, you play with 11 men for that long, you, uh, or 12 men for that long, and 11 men at, men at one stage, it's going to suck a lot of juice out of your, your legs, basically. So they looked like a bit of a tired team, didn't they? Yeah. A bit just, of a flat team. They had a lot of possession, too. I think there was one stage they had 60, 60 yeah. times they were tackled in the opposition 20 metre line. So We should give Canberra a rap, though. Oh, I thought you know, Canberra incredible. The way they track. defend. I thought they are two big men at the start, Papali oh. and, and um, Tapani. T- 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 yeah. Both their milestone games, I think 150 and 200. I thought those big men were enormous. And, but when they went off the field, I was like, oh, here we go. They could be a chance of, you know, falling back into the old ways that what's happened with Canberra. But then Horsberg off the bench was all awesome. And I think young kid, Zach Wolford on debut, Zach Wolford, yeah. he played really well and set yeah. up a match winning try. Yeah. So um, he's a good fellow. I played him at Canterbury and um, yeah, so happy for him just the way he played. And they won two games with no Jack White in two. That's, Jack's been suspended mm, for both games and won yeah, them both. I didn't even think of that really. Yeah. He's been a, it's pretty remarkable. Unbelievable. And then yeah. you throw in Fogarty, Hodgson, they haven't got there. So, yeah. Well, Fogarty's was... getting close to coming back, I think. Yeah. He's not well, that far away. So, he was there at the game, looked like he was moving around well. Yeah. So, if they can get that, that, just that little bit more of a leader to help whiten out when he does yeah. come back, I think they'll be able to knock a few teams off that obviously people wouldn't probably pick him to do. Well, they're back in the mix now because you win two games and Scott and suddenly you're back in the mix, aren't you? And <laughs> oh, Ricky, so close. Ricky was under the pump two weeks ago and. Um, you could see how much he enjoyed it on the weekend, Ricky. So passionate. Oh, he was like, riding him home on the end of the game what? on the sideline. Yeah, it's what it? you want to see your coach getting right behind your side. Yeah. So it shows you how hard the industry is to, to be involved in. Yep. And uh, Dale Finucane, there's no news yet on the severity of that no, concussion. He, is he, well, I noticed he spoke after the game. I didn't go in the sheds, but I, I did see, or he might have gone in the press conference because he's captain, obviously. Um, so I think Wade Graham did the press oh, conference. Oh, Wade did the yeah, press conference. Yeah, yeah. he, he, well, he was wobbly, but like, he was. He, and he's had a second one. He's had a history. So you know how Wado, he had to miss, I think, we had Wado for the first six, seven rounds, and he got that one against, I think it was the Dragon. No, Penrith. It was mm. Penrith when we played them in origin periods, about round 12. He had to miss six months, I think, or something. Mm. Yeah. Does, does Dale go down that? Well, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't think this was as bad. didn't look as bad. And, so, and as I said, Dale spoke in the sheds after the game, so... They mustn't be too concerned about him because you would have thought if they were really concerned well, about him, he wouldn't have spoken. He had one against Melbourne three weeks ago, yeah. four weeks ago. And yeah. this one, the, like it wasn't one where they just stayed down. He got up and he was wobbly legged. Couldn't yeah. get up to start. And the issue is he's had him in the past he's as well. He's had a lot. So. You know, so I don't know whether Dale, whether they pull him out the firing line for a couple of weeks just to give him a, yeah, you, how long, a rest. What's the protocol? Do you know the protocols? The pro- at all? Well, there's no time frame. There's no set stand down period in the NRL. Okay. you just got to pass your... Um, you need to see an independent doctor yep. and you just need to pass your test. If you pass your test, he could play next week. Okay. Sharks have also lost, I think, three of five now as well. And you kind of see when they get a couple of injuries, they haven't really, like, the depth's not great at the Sharks. Yeah, I think they've got a really good 17. Charlie, um, obviously, Willie, Will Kennedy's been their best player in the last two or three years and you lose a lot of strike with him out the back and um, that's probably the position that they probably are unsure about. Like putting Nico Hines back there, obviously he played really good there for Melbourne, but... Then you lose Hines at seven. So, um, and another big loss that people haven't really spoke about. I think Brayden Newelli, um, Hemlin Newelli, has been enormous for them to start the year. Um, you know, they lost Jack Williams early yeah. on in the game on the weekend, and and then you throw Jesse Remian, who's also suspended, who's been one of their main strike centers out wide. So, yeah, they're, they're they're sort of a bit thin on depth there, and and players have got to step up. But yeah, probably to go to the next level like those, you know, like we say with Penrith and, and the Melbournes, you know, 
they've got to probably get a couple of players that go to that next step. You know, every every couple of years at a club, there's always those players that come out of nowhere. And, you know, Sifa Talakai, for instance, 18 months ago, was on a training trial there. If they can get a couple of guys to step up from their juniors, you know, they'll be yeah. a, a big strike. Well, that's yeah. it, boys. That's it for us today on the Monday oh, Scrum. Done. Aaron yeah, Woods, good. filling in for Benji. Charlie, you did a great job. Magnificent performance from Charlie. <laughs> oh, man, I knocked it on several times. Real. Knocked it on several Career times. Career in it, mate. Career. <laughs> We've all had a knock on, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, we haven't discussed Woodsy's uh, Woodsy's <laughs> I I got away Twitter with it. fame. Oh, of course. <laughs> no, no, What's going sure on Woodsy there? Woodsy shot out the defensive line. Yeah, so all week we spoke about putting pressure on the halves. <laughs> I've just gone too early, Reed. I've gone before the ball was passed. and <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yeah. And thank God that they saved the try because I reckon I probably would have been sitting on the bench straight after that. <laughs> yeah. If the, uh, well, they should have saved the try because it was a bloke running from dummy half, so the markers should have had him covered. Shouldn't yeah, they? but it's my fault too, Reed. I shouldn't okay, have I'm trying to help you. I'm yeah, trying to resolve your blame. I'm honest, I'm honest when I got reviewed too. You're just trying <laughs> to put <laughs> pressure on the half. Yeah, but you don't go before the ball's passed, Okay, Reedy. I'm trying to help you, mate. <laughs> I'm not going to blame anyone but myself, mate. <laughs> thank thank. I think it was Moses Embo I saved me, covered my backside. Oh, big dear, time. good man, mate. Good I want a beer. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, make sure you tune in next week. We'll have Emma Lawrence and Benji Marshall back from their big Magic Round weekends. And Will yeah. Benji get a start again after Woodsy? I don't know, mate. I don't he's know. Sweet, mate. He's got his own show. He's killing it. Maybe <laughs> we just add Woodsy into the mix oh, hello. to join in. <laughs> oh, That'd be cool. nice. Once a month, you know, you yeah, jump in yeah, here exactly. and there. <laughs> Might take Reedy's spot. Yeah. <laughs> Woodsy's mouth. Oh, yes. <laughs>